Hey everybody, welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today I wanna to talk a little bit about 3D print failures, and also show you some print failures that I've had, including the biggest print failure that I've ever encountered, and then offer up some words of encouragement and also some tips and tricks on what you can do to try to increase your success rate of printing if you're running into issues. And the first part of that is knowing that no matter if you're a beginner or you've been printing for years, there is no way to get a 100% success rate on 3D printing. Sometimes things just happen and they are out of our control. And when you look at a lot of videos on YouTube, including the ones that I make that show these really amazing looking figures and these breathtaking dioramas, I know that it can be discouraging to see these beautiful, beautiful prints. And then if you look at what you're trying to do, you might be trying to print a little tiny test cube and are having no luck with it. And it might make you want to just stop printing altogether. But do not give up is something that everybody encounters, but not everyone shows those failures, all right? So nobody is perfect. So let me show you some print failures that I have here on the table. This is not all of them. These are just some ones that I decided to keep. The first one here is this leg piece of a Cyborg Superman from Berserk 3D. Now, I had a goal of making the biggest 3D printed model that I have ever done on my small entry level machines. The Anycubic Photon Mono 4K for the resin and then the Creality Ender 3 Pro for the filament. So I wanted to print Cyborg Superman in resin and I had to print him in about 11 pieces in order to get him to like 90% scale. I printed out so many different pieces of him and this was one of the last ones that I had to do and you can see this is completely unusable. It's completely wide open. This is a massive, massive print failure. And I had other things on the build plate. So when I saw that this wasn't working out and the other ones were working out, you know, I had to just wait for those to finish. But then when this does happen, you have to go through the process of cleaning the vat you have to do more washing, more curing, just more work, another pair of wasted gloves. And when you're doing prints back to back to back to back, it can be really draining, especially mentally draining to know that I've got to print this off again. And I actually had two failed prints of this exact same piece. I don't know what was going on, but two failed prints of this. Also on the exact same figure, this is his waist. And at first blush, it looks like everything is just fine. But then when you look a little bit closer, you'll see that poor Superman here does not have a right butt cheek. It didn't print all the way down. And then also on the underside is uneven. It's a little bit separated, a little bit cracked. And as a result, the rest of the pieces don't fit properly inside. It, may, it leaves a really huge gap. So here I am with pieces successfully printed out using up a decent amount of resin to do so, but then running into print failures on two crucial pieces is super, super discouraging. And then there were some other pieces here that I don't have anymore. One sprung a resin leak and I knew that that was going to happen because no uh, IPA was getting into the hole. It was pre hollowed out and I had to go back in and print it solid so I wouldn't have to deal with that problem. And I printed some other pieces in filament because I ran out of resin and then my FEP sheet developed a little bit of a puncture. All those things can be really, really discouraging. But in the end, it all worked out with this really, really awesome sculpture here that I'm going to make another video on to show you that in more detail. So even though those are smaller pieces that I had to reprint, the same thing happens sometimes if you're printing larger figures such as this Spider Woman here, Jessica Drew Spider Woman from Wicked. Now I did a video review about this figure, but that review was based on the second attempted print. This was the first one and she is completely solid. She's got good weight to her. She used a decent amount of resin, but I noticed that she was having some problems on the back, pretty bad layer separation there on the back. And then I also learned a lesson about being impatient because when I saw her coming up kind of like this in the vat, I was looking at her and I thought that maybe her hands didn't print properly. So I decided to stop the print, but <laughs> Crazy me didn't realize that her hands were tucked into her thigh. 
and one of her hands wasn't even supposed to print at all. It was a part of the base and not a part of the figure. So really, I probably could have kept this and maybe just sanded it down to uh, to just try to get it as flat as possible. And no one's looking at the back, so I probably could have gotten away with it because the front looks really good. But the second one that I tried to print came out even better. So either way, I stopped the print. So this is also a failure, but we soldier on nonetheless. Here are some other print failures. They're smaller, but they were also really discouraging. So here's Mario, also from Wicked. I thought this Mario was going to turn out all right, but he's got a big hole at the bottom of his arm. And then there's like this tear right here near his belly. And then there's just these weird gouges all around him. I had to print him back uh, again. And then here's his lower part. He's got this separation at his foot and his foot was squished. And then his other leg didn't print at all. It's a big hole right there. Had to reprint that again. Here's a flying Koopa Troopa with a squished foot. Can't use that and a squished hand. Had to use that. Can't use that, had to do that again. Then I also did a video on the Cyclops and Rogue figure from Wicked. Cyclops turned out great, but here's the one attempt at printing Rogue. Didn't work out too good because crazy separation right there on her leg. Don't worry, we can try it again. Only this time her arm didn't print properly. Okay, we have to try that again. Here's a piece for her head. It looks a little bit weird. Had to print that one again as well. Three attempts in order to get this rogue to print properly. And if it just wasn't for me trying to have a piece of like 90s X-Men nostalgia, probably would have given up on it. And I'd imagine that other people would want to give up as well when they see that these prints aren't working out the way that they would like for them to. But if that happens, what I have to say is you need a win. You need a win. You need to print something successfully, maybe something that you know that you can print successfully to kind of get you going and encourage you to keep going. One of the things that I had to do in order to get me to jump back into it was to print this little polygonal Snorlax Pokemon. Now this is made out of filament, but I was having some print failures and I just wanted to have something that wasn't gonna take very long to print that I really felt that would be successful. And when I saw that this came out looking good and there's no problems with it at all, gave me a little extra boost to be like, okay, let me take a breath. I'll go back and I'll try again. Don't force your way through it. Just give yourself some time and then come back to it a little bit later and then that'll help you out too. Now, let me now show you the biggest print failure that I have ever had. This picture that you're looking at here is a 140 milliliter resin brick. And this came out of my resin 3D printer when I was trying to print a bust of the Faceless King from Witch Song Miniatures. And what I did was I just started the print. I didn't even wait for the build plate to go all the way down into the resin and I just walked away. I didn't check up on it for several hours. I got cocky, I got confident thinking, hey, I got a good streak of successful prints. I'm sure this will be just fine. But what I didn't realize is that every layer that was being printed, instead of having the, the outline basically of the figure printing up in layers, the entire screen was being cured layer by layer by layer until there was not a drop of resin left inside of that vat. Now, how did that happen and what can be done to stop it? Maybe you've, encur you've encountered something like that too. Well, the first thing that you can do is change your SD card. When you buy a 3D printer, chances are it's gonna come with a USB stick that you can load your files on. And it's really great if they include those, but they are notorious for being cheap and unreliable. The USB stick that came with my printer, it started acting funny. Less than a week after I got it, I would plug into my computer and they would say something like, uh, this hardware is malfunctioning, click here to repair it. And then I would plug it into the printer and it wouldn't recognize any files until I sort of pushed it to the back you know, wiggling it, wiggling it like an old Nintendo cartridge, and then that would get it to, to recognize it. Now, even though I did change the USB stick for that printer, the file was corrupted. 
Don't know how it got corrupted after it was sliced, but it was totally corrupted. And I would have seen that if I had looked at the screen and checked on my print, I would have seen that the entire build plate was being cured at one time, the entire area of the screen and in the vat was being cured at one time instead of the individual layers of the figure. I could have stopped it. I could have saved myself a lot of resin. So the lesson here is if you can periodically check on your prints, Look at what's being printed on the screen. And once it gets high enough, look into the vat and see what's coming up. You can catch it early enough. You'll be able to save yourself a lot of resin and you won't have a giant brick sitting inside of your disposable support basket like I do. There's no magic formula for getting a successful print, but I will share with you some things that have helped me out along the way. And one of the most important things that I've learned is don't get too fiddly with the settings, at least not in the beginning. It's really easy to go down a rabbit hole and see what other people think your settings should be for your lift settings, your retraction settings, how many bottom layers should you have, what your transition layer should be, you know, and all these things. And you get so many differing opinions you start mixing and matching different settings. And then that can just lead you down a road of just failures. Okay. Everybody's machine is a little bit different. So starting out, I would suggest don't mess with anything. Just leave it as it is and use the manufacturer's suggested recommendations and then see how that works for you. And if that does work for you, if it's not broke, then don't fix it. Now, I know when it comes to calibration pieces, people want to see those cones lining up just perfect. You know, they want to see those holes perfectly round, perfectly punctured, just perfect, perfect, perfect. But the reality is for most people, when you're printing stuff, you're not going to be looking at it under a microscope. And if it looks good to you, then it looks good. As you go on, you can start to identify different things that you can tweak and different things that you can change, but do not burden yourself with those things in the very beginning. In the beginning, we're just looking to have successful prints that look good, that look cool. And if you stick with the manufacturer's default recommendations, there's a good chance that that is something that you are going to get. So you can dive into the more complex stuff a little bit later, but I would suggest not to get too caught up in all the calibration things, at least not at first, so you can get some wins under your belt. The other thing that I've learned is that auto supports can actually be your friend. Now, just like when it comes to all the different settings suggestions, I've read a lot of things with people saying that they do not trust auto supports. Auto supports are only going to work a certain percentage of the time and that they like to do manual supports. And it made me think that, do I really have to learn how to manually support everything? Do I really need to know all about these different islands and, and how to connect them? And should I do heavy? Should I do light? Should I do medium? What should the density be and all of this stuff? And Maybe that was true back when the slicing software wasn't as sophisticated. But in my experience from the many, many prints that I have done, auto supports in Chi2 box work very well, really, really exceptionally well, especially on the default settings. I don't change anything. I don't change the, dis the density. It's at 50. I don't care. I leave it like that. And more often than not, my prints are successful. So let's say you got a figure like this and you want to use auto supports because he's not supported. Don't put them on the build plate flat like this. All you have to do is tilt them, give them a little bit of an angle, give them a little bit of a tilt, then go to the auto supports, have it generate those auto supports. Medium has always worked well for me and then print that way. And most of the time, that print is going to come out just fine, assuming that all your other settings are working properly as well. So if you're a little bit worried about getting a figure that's not supported and then adding supports to it, if you're only looking for pre-supported files, I was that way too. You can get figures that are not supported and just do the tilt and auto support method. And these days, chances are it's going to work out just fine for you. Don't be afraid to do it. I was afraid to do it. And now, I don't know what I would do without it. And even though it might sound cliche, the most important thing is just to not give up. 
It is a very, very satisfying thing to pull out a fully printed, beautiful looking figure out of resin that you've printed yourself and that you can put on your display. You can prime it, you can paint it up and then Kind of like me, you can have a whole little section dedicated to the figures that you've printed and knowing that the amount of money that you paid in, in materials to get those things to print out is far, far less than it would have been if you were going out and buying them in the store. Even if you were buying unpainted versions of them it will still be a whole lot more than the cost of resin in order to make these figures. So, so do not give up keep printing, keep trying, keep learning. And I hope that these things that I told you can help you out at least a little bit along the way in your 3D printing journey because things are just gonna get better from now. It's gonna be more technology. There's gonna be more things to make printing easier for us. And hopefully one day we can get a completely non-toxic resin so that we won't have to worry about, you know, potential health issues later down the line because everything will be nice and safe, but we'll see if that happens or not. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching this episode of Figure Feedback. And if you have any suggestions, words of encouragement, anything like that when it comes to print failures, anything that could help prevent print failures, please put it down into the comments below so that we can all read them and partake in community knowledge. So thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jeremy. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time.